Spring here at HSN. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm having such a blast. I'm usually fangirling and watching Patricia Nash from home, so it's a real treat for me to actually get to do one of your shows, doggone it. And I will say this, Patricia, you, I want to thank you. You pulled out all the stops for this show, not the least of which is that wonderful This Day Only. Here's another one that I think is so... Um, just a, a real good example of what you do and how you do it. And I know we've got some videotape that we'll share with everybody as well. So take us on a little tour. Now, of course, if I'll do colors here real quickly, because I know for me, that's one of the things I always want to know when I'm shopping for my Patricia Nash bags. So we do have the black tooled. We are, this is the cognac tooled. This is, oh, look at that beautiful thing. Oh, the Peruvian painting. Oh my gosh, you wanna talk about a jaw dropper. And then of course we have the Heritage Multi. There are only 90 of that Heritage Multi. Um, Patricia, I'm gonna to defer to you immediately, of course, to talk about the design details and the leather uh, selection. And of course that burnishing process, which is so mm. old world. That's why I say even those mortgage payment bags, they do <laughs> not do what you do in this distinctive and unique and exceptional way. So should we start with the manufacturing yeah. or the inspiration? Yeah, sure. I mean, when we all talk about full grain leather, this is really a whole cow hide that's laid across the table. It's vegetable tanned. It is cut out by hand. All the edges are then burned just like they were a hundred years ago. All of that hand burnishing, what does that mean? Hand staining across this tooling, whether it's braiding on a bag or, or any of these other kind of lacing details, it's all done by hand. And look at how the shape of this bag, I mean, look at how they have to cut it out and they sew it with our old fashioned, Shannon, single stitch machine. That's not easy, especially when you look at the, the thickness of this leather and the fact that there's two layers of it. And look how perfect that stitching is. Not one stitch is out of place. It comes around the curve of this beautiful feminine shape and, and just looks so perfect. I mean, you can't get that by a computerized machine or, you know, an automated factory. This has to come from a, a craftsmanship, a crafted you know, village, so to speak. And that's what this is. So this tooling, all of that you're seeing on the screen right now is hand varnished. What does that mean? It means it's hand stained. So after this leather is already finished and tanned, vegetable tanned, then they go in and they hand burnish it with a little sponge and bring in that color. And then they put a finish over it so it stays permanent. And then that just brings out that tooling look on there. But this is a beautiful shape. This came from a vintage bag I found in Paris, Shannon. And in Paris, a lot of these vintage dealers have some really unique shaped bags that, that designers back in the 40s and 50s would really get creative with. And this is one of those shapes I said, you know what? I could take this and make it functional. I could add a crossbody strap on it so we could have this great vintage experience of this high-end fashion, high street bag. But it would be great every day. So that is Gwen. It, it, it is. Uh, Gwen, it's stylish, but it's practical. And of course, yep. again, but let's show you <laughs> some. Can you tell? I know. I'm a bad girl, Patricia. Know. You know that's true. I know. But so many great details. Once more, there's that nice magnetic closure. Right. Makes it easy to get in and out of. Um, love that easy access panel. These elasticized pockets on the interior are just, again, so practical and so uh, they are. functional. Right? You want to make sure that things aren't slipping and sliding around. And yet, you still have that room. This would accommodate maybe one of those mini tablets, your reader, your note card, even one of those bigger wallets. I mean, there's really a lot of room in here, isn't there? Yes, and if you notice how when you pulled it, you can see how the side gusset and how it's sewn, that you can really extend this out to be as much as you want to carry it or little as you want to carry in it. Yeah, there you go. It's almost like an accordion closure. What does that mean? It means that when sometimes you know you have a bag and you don't carry much in it, it doesn't look good because it doesn't hold its shape. True. Or sometimes if you overstuff it, it loses its shape. This unique style and construction of a bag will keep its beautiful shape all the time, but it, and whether you have too much in it or not enough. 
And these two big, strong mag snaps here are really nice, too. So if you carry it as a top handle, you've got that secure uh, flap that's down. It's, it's and so then... Cute. If you want to, you can unsnap underneath the flap the strap, Shannon, and it can become an oversized, just a little top handle bag, which oh, is fun. Yes. You don't want that crossbody strap. So maybe you like, you know, maybe you're going to a church function. Maybe you're going to a little uh, lady's lunch. Maybe you're going to a wedding. You know, just some special occasion. Maybe you're going on a date and you're just wearing that pretty black dress or something and you just want that top handle bag. Maybe you're going to put it on your forearm like she is doing right now. And you don't want a big, long strap hanging. That's great. Fold it up, put it inside the bag, and then maybe when you're out again later and you need your hands free, maybe you're having a little cocktail or a cup of coffee and a, a sweet or something, you could just put that snap, that crossbody strap on, put it on your body, and then, there, you know, go. And, and you could, um, by the way, it also has that zipper pocket on the back. I know I, I'm kind right. of obsessed with that, but you know, it's just, it's a big thing. You'll use that. You'll Me love too. that. I mean, it's nice. Hey, Patricia, just real quickly, I'm trying to remember from past history, because you know I watch your shows. Did you do that Peruvian painting just one other time? I'm trying to remember I, I, when you did. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. See, told you. I'm, yes. Girl, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. And <laughs> I do. I remember yes. that it's like owning artwork that you can display like wearable art, isn't it? It really is. Both of those prints, a Peruvian painting, I actually was in Peru about now, I guess it was about seven, eight years ago with my husband. And it, the, the, just this painting that I saw um, that was really on a dress. It, and I call it a painting because you could look at how all the colors are different, but they blend together. Even though you've got this beautiful Merlot and, and that blue in there and that, that like, butterscotch they all are the same tones and they blend into this midnight blue background it's so romantic and so dreamy and this is a great replacement for someone who loves to have a black bag you know if you're a girl that always keep, uh, keeps getting drawn to a black bag that print is for you this one multi is my very first print i ever got and it came from a gentleman in Santa Croce, Italy. And he gave this print to me. He showed me how to do it. I worked with him for many, many, many months. In fact, probably a little bit over a year just to get that process done on leather properly. And it, it is a famous, famous painting now that, you know, is really my signature um, of the first multi-print I've ever done. Well, and it will be your signature too. I mean, it's the where'd you get it bag for sure. It is on I, three, it is so. I mean, and it's really true because it's one yeah. of those bags, like you said, unless you got that vintage bag in Paris and let's be honest, well, I, I do, I used to do a lot of um, vintage shopping, but they're pretty, but they're not necessarily practical. They, they don't, oh, have, yeah. isn't that true though? And, and a lot of times yeah. too, and we'll talk about this with the shopper that's coming up too, they're sometimes the the leather can be kind of hard they're hard to access they they're just pretty to put on a shelf somewhere but it's not, they're not ones that you yes. would normally wear when i said wearable art it is wearable art it's just this way to show off maybe a little style, a little finesse. And I think that's one of the reasons that women are so bananas about your handbags, Patricia. Yes, we we collect them. And boy, if you're gonna collect anything, I hope you do that shopper that we're coming up, uh, have coming up next. But if you're gonna do a print, either one of these is the perfect way to go. And you're right, I like that little half arc of that little shape to it. So about 12 inches by eight inches. And there, of course, is that adjustable cross crossbody strap and then as uh, Patricia was pointing out too this is that Peruvian painting that we love 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 by the way you can see those magnets really they're not ones that are going to you know flap around on you right. nice and secure but those are those snaps where you could actually detach that um, crossbody if you really want to make it into a ladies who lunch bag so yours is here only a hundred, give or take, in each individual color choice. Although I will tell you that Heritage Multi, I think, is actually the most limited at that point. And then Patricia, it's nice. You do you do you always try to do a companion wallet?